Hello, my name is Diego Hernandez, and I will be speaking about Luis Barragan, a Mexican architect from Guadalajara. Luis Barragan was born in March 9, 1902, in Guadalajara, Mexico. He was born into a rich family and was able to attend uh, the Escuela de Libre de Ingenieros for engineering. And he was very much a civil engineering, although had the aspirations to be an architect. After which, his father took Luis to uh, Europe, only for his own gain and, and for, as a vacation, really. But in the process, he did visit most of the architectural meccas on the continent at the time. Um, while he was there, he was in, extremely impressed by the Mediterranean gardens and developed the interest in landscape architecture. He was really, in particular, fascinated by Ferdinand Black. Back. He was impressed with the architecture from South Spain and North Africa, particularly in love with the gardens that was in there. And a lot of the Arabian landscape architecture really caught his attention. After which he would return to Mexico and produce a series of works which were pretty remarkably influenced by Ferdinand Beck. Um, after he would later return to Europe and reside and live in Paris for a while in the 30s and would even meet Le Corbusier and attend his lectures frequently. Both Beck and Le Corbusier would have a profound influence on his work once he was able to finally home, return back to his home country and really develop his own designs. So his architecture from the period of 1925 to 1935 was just recently when he returned back from his first trip to Europe after witnessing and being taken aback from all of the Mediterranean and Arabian style of architecture. Um, here are some of the quick examples. I won't go too into detail for them because they don't really define his entire career. But you can see that already he was pretty interested in the texture and, and the colors of these buildings. Um, you can see some recessed uh, layered windows in these buildings, which do reflect some of the Arabian uh, Northern African architecture. And um, we really start to see at least the beginning of his development of his own ideas after which. So once he, ret once he returned to Europe and resided in Paris for a couple of years, there he really got into um, Le Corbusier and attended his lectures. And when he returned the second time to Mexico, um, right after this period that he spent living in Paris, his architecture really changed and his designs really reflected that of functionalism and modernism. He was particularly doing um, globalization style of architecture. And at this point, Le Coup at this point, uh, Luis Bar Bar Baragan was in a way anxious about his financial situation. He grew up rich, so he wanted to maintain that rich lifestyle. So a lot of his architecture here was quick built developing. Um, architecture, so mainly just houses he wanted to sell for a profit. They weren't um, really evocative of his architectural um, design or thoughts, but were really made just to make money and to give him that better lifestyle or that financially stable lifestyle that he wanted to maintain. So after he did a couple of these houses, he kind of took a step back and did not design any architecture for a while. and basically only reverted to designing gardens. After a couple of years, he would later return and his houses would enter, his design would enter a third phase of which Luis Barragan is definitely his most identifiable by. His third phase is like a cons consolidation of the modern and the historic. So his influences from both black back and from the Corbusier. There are still some aspects of texture and still some aspects of modernism found here. And the first house that I will, well, the first piece of architecture I will talk about is the Capilla de la Capichunas. So this is one of the most revered religious architectural works in Mexico from this time period. And one of the key aspects of this building was that this was a building he wanted to invoke the feeling of entering and falling to your knees in prayer. So I'll go back to one slide, but part of the strategy here is to actually hide this cross behind a wall. And this would mean that the cross is actually not visible from the entrance or from these uh, prayer seats. And when lit from this uh, light source, which is a window, only the shadow of the cross would be visible in front of them, and thus that would give a more emotional um, 
connection with the prayer and the prayers and the uh, here the religion. Again, uh, this building is mostly an in interior work, but still we begin to right away we begin to see some of um, his options for uh, texture and linking nature to architecture and also to the religious. So uh, the second example is La Fuentes de los Amantes. Now, this is a work of him creating a garden. Now, instead of it being filled with greenery and then for people, this was a piece that was under the, he was under the impression that horses would be available for transportation. He had a distinct love for horses and nature. So he designed this place in a way that accommodates horses more so than people, honestly. Um, he thought of architecture as like an extension of garden. Again, he wanted to connect, he wanted to make a connection between architecture and nature. And he made this in particular for that connection directly through the horses. Now, finally, we'll take a look at the Cas Casa Gilardi, made in 1976. This was his final work before he passed, and is often thought of as his final garden. Um, from the exterior, you can see that in terms of form, mold qualities, it is pretty, I guess, modern in a way, but in his thought and in his ideas and concepts, it is pretty out there because he is trying to relate, again, nature with his building, and in particular, this shot, which is from the what we call the comedor or the living eating area, looking at this pool of water with a light with a light source hitting it was a the ray of light is symbolic for the divine and a connection between God and nature, kind of symbolizing this as a place of final resting place or maybe even a place of baptism. Um, here, light is relating to God, and again, the architecture is an extension of the garden. Now, in conclusion, Luis Barragan was not an architect that we could say identified with a specific movement or design style. Um, he was very much his own individual doing his own thing in architecture, not really uh, in the, not really being able to conform or conform into a single architectural movement. He took from both the modernism and uh, functionalism and also took from the historical, uh, just from the textures, the materials and the ideology of bringing the nature and the outside, which is also a modern idea in some instances. But um, Luis, Luis's uh, experience and his architecture differs from the Western canon because in the Western canon it is pretty black and white and everyone has its own place. But Luis is in a special case where he is like a mix of these two things, a mix of almost a postmodernism and a modernism. And this would be, and it's a shame that doesn't show up in the canon or, or architects like this don't show up in the canon because I think it could really elevate the education of architecture.